It was bad luck for her with the rain. Here's the, the mighty Lon Rowe. His weight for age record, 17 starts, 14 wins, one placing. It's very hard to find a gap in this uh, in this horse's form line. It just speaks for itself, Bruce, and if he can dominate this race and not find any trouble, um, he does look the winner. Yes, he looks the winner to me too, because I'm, I just think uh, his main danger, I'm not saying the track has been affected by this rain, but surely it's uh, about to have some sort of impact on it. His main dangers aren't going to be helped by this rain, Bruce. Defire ran second last year, but he came off three wins in Sydney, including victories over Lonro and a fifth in the Epsom. His form doesn't look as strong this year. Well, Damon, you wrote him last start, and you were saying that he just doesn't quite feel as uh, good as he did last year. He's not. His acceleration isn't there what it like, what it, like it was last year, and uh, as we speak of this rain, well, it's good. certainly against him. But Fields of Omar may be suited by it. He's had two big long spells in his career because of leg problems, Fields of Omar. Yeah. He beat Lonro home last year. He is a quality horse. He's fresh. He's the fresh horse on the scene, Bruce. That's a bit of the key. Last year, I rode him in this race backing up after the Caulfield Cup, and he was a little bit flat. Uh, whether he's in quite as good a form this year is the key, but uh, he's definitely uh, fresher for this race. He ran, did run well on the Turek, but, uh, he, you know, only having that many runs in the last 12 months, you just wonder whether he's uh, just fit enough to win it. He's the wild card in a way, I mean, He's the four-year-old, the derby winner, the Epsom winner. He's unproven away for age, but he could make a giant leap forward today. You can't pop them, uh, young four-year-olds, in the spring, Bruce, because they haven't experienced weight for age racing. He's a high-class horse and clearly the danger. If this is a staying test uh, with those two mares running along in it, it will suit him. Natural Blitz, you won the Fian here. That race has been a terrific guide over the years. A number of horses have done the double, including Better Loosen Up and Rubiton when you go back and more recently Sunline and Northerly. And worth remembering, he did run second to Northerly in the Australian Cup. He is a terrific horse. He's got a paralysing sprint. I'd love to have seen him get a nice smother in the race. Another one who needs a dry track. OK, so Natural Blitz, uh, probably the only horse you feel that has the same turn of foot as Long Rose, whether he can sustain it. Paraka, bred in Argentina, has done all the racing in South Africa, trained by Andrew Boulding in uh, England, owned in Australia. Look, really, you know, six wins, ten starts, never been beyond a mile. She's probably a hundred to one chance, but she's interesting. <laughs> it would be a miracle if she won, I think, with just what she's, the task she's faced in the last year, you know, racing in South Africa, travel to Europe, and then um, and coming out here and not race for so long to, to win our great, one of our greatest races would be a she may, little task. She may have an influence on the race, because she does go forward. It'd be inter interesting to see if she does put pressure on Shower Roses, don't yeah, well, she outraises the other uh, forward runner and maybe leader in the race. Um, it's whether who's going to take it up here. They've had trouble holding up Paraka in her track work, so Chris Munz might have to take a sit on Shower Roses. She is one suited by this soft ground. She has good good wet track form. Been some money for her too in the ring. We've just been told by Ken Cummings, a dollar sixty-five long road. And Zagalia, who was a terrific runner in the court. Okay, you know, in her last ten runs, she's had nine different jockeys. Zagalia. Today, it's Greg Child. It's her first start at weight for age. It would be a surprise. Her run was good in the Turnbull, um, a similar sort of weight for age race, uh, set weights and penalties. Um, a good run in the Caulfield Cup, whether she can back, back that good run up here uh, is a question mark. It's going to be difficult for her, uh, particularly she's a Zabiel man. I'm actually warming to her a little bit for uh, the first Tuesday, uh, Bruce, but uh, I just don't think she's got the zip here. There it says it all, doesn't it? No certainties in racing, there is today. The big three will be back after this. Well, look at Paraka here with Nash Rawilla. She's absolutely fired up, and Nash uh, skidding along the ground. She's doing a pretty good somersault, but uh, John Leitz is down there. John, how has she recovered, and how's Nash recovered? Well, they're both OK. Nash is just going to get back on her now, Bruce, but she uh, she took off, and she took out the side, and uh, I thought we were in a lot of trouble there for a while because she did head straight for the barrier stalls, and fortunately, the guys were all there, and they, they stopped there without any harm done. She only went about 50 metres, but uh, Nash is just checking the saddle now. He'll get back into the saddle again, and uh, in a few minutes he'll be on his way. But no harm done to horse or rider. Only a three from the Russian judge there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and let's see, I was talking to Andrew Balling, the trainer of uh, Paraki, yesterday, and he said if she goes mad on the way to the barriers, that's a good sign. That means she's uh, got her mind right. Well, Doc, she, she's a certainty. Then if she wasn't, too, she wasn't in a real good mood. Uh, she's settled down now, Nash. Got a, we've got a, uh, the boys have got a lead on her and they're just walking her around one of the attendants. John, we can see Lonro. He just looks so relaxed. Firstly, the track. Uh, has it been affected by the rain? I don't think so, Bruce. I don't think it had enough time to. I think it'll chop up a little bit, but not a great deal. I don't think it's going to... to it won't affect the horses like the fire and those horses that can't handle those slow or, you know, dead tracks. But this track is... Uh, 
been spot on today. They've been running terrific times. It'll take a fair drop of rain to uh, to make this uh, any condition change in the track, I'd say. But we're getting it out here. It's coming down fairly heavy now at the moment. The only thing is, as Damien will explain to you, sometimes in these types of tracks, the visibility for jockeys up the back is pretty hard sometimes, Damien. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad with only a small field though in this one, let's see. Yeah, and, and I think what you, you'll see, I think you'll see uh, Darren will, will ride longer and he'll more or less keep him out of trouble and he'll make his run out wide and uh, I don't think he'll be getting much much thrown at him. Have a look at Long Run there, he knows he's a good horse. Darren just likes to look, let him look uh, look around there and just take it all in and he just, he, he waits till he's ready to move on. I'll tell you what, Damon, every time, every start Long Run has, it's the same before the race. He stands there, has a look around, got the ears pricked. What a relaxed horse. He's a lovely horse too, Doc, and, and the thing about him is, it's the funny part about the horse is, he, he, I think you'll find that he works before any other horse works at Flemington, he works on his own all the time, but when we go in to do the interviews with him, Darren said to me a couple of times, just be careful because he's very competitive and he doesn't like horses too close to him, and we can see that in his races, can't we? No doubt about that. So he's a, he's a hot a favourite. We haven't had a horse dominate this race. Well, Might and Power was uh, 11 to 8 on in 1997. He'd already achieved, achieved true greatness before that, though, because he'd won the double, the Caulfield Melbourne Cup the year before. This horse, really, today, he's, he's, where he sits in Australian racing depends on what happens in the next two minutes. He's a sensational horse. But the great weight for age horses win the Cox Plate. And this is this horse's chance. Ordinary horses don't win this race, Bruce. You go through the record and... Even though it's run on a, a strange track like Moody Valley, it doesn't usually stop them. You know, the best horse in the race generally wins. And I guess, Damon, that's because of the pressure in the race. I mean, it just, uh, the horses without that constitution, without the champion qualities, they are found wanting, aren't they? Are you more confident about Long Road right now than you were at the start of the day or less? Um, I, I, I'm still just as confident. I don't think the running has, has changed anything. I'm still sticking with uh, if he has a trouble-free run and uh, doesn't get involved in, in any scrimmages with any other horse, uh, he'll win. Ken Callender, what's happening in the ring? Uh, Bruce, they took the $1.65 long row. He's into a $1.60 solid. And uh, there's a bit of money for Klingaling, $6 into $5.50. And they took the $15 and most of the 14s shower of roses. So it's nearly 40 years since a horse has been this short in a cox plate. We've got to go back to 1967 and Tobin Bronze. So that's how much this horse is dominating this race. If you tell your bank tellers out there, Bruce, I reckon. Where's he going to be at the judge the first time, do you think? I'd be looking for him to be in the middle of the field somewhere. Um, the one thing you know that it's going to be guaranteed pretty good speed with Paraka and Shiaro Roses and they won't be walking. It should break the field up and that should give Darren every opportunity to give this horse his chance. Damon, if you're on playing the language, just stalk him or want to be in front of him? Well, I mean, I wouldn't go out with any sort of set plan. It's, it's, you just have to ride your horse how he's going, because I think if you do start worrying about other horses too much, it can be detrimental to you. Well, Darren Beeman first rode Long Row in the Missile Stakes in August 2002. He's had 17 rides on him for 13 wins. When he got the day off the suspension, he said, I've been given the opportunity to make the fairy tale come true. Darren, it's over to you, and it's over to Brian Martin. <laughs> Here's Long Road coming up. Up he goes to seven. And he's going to do the stand in octagonal with 95. And the fire completes the line. They're ready now. Set. Shower of Rose has tried to drop its head. Natural Blitz tried to sit down. They're ready. Natural Blitz fractures in gate two. And the rod is calling out. Ready. Set. Shower Rose is lashing out in the guts. Rider calling out to the starter in gate three. This time they stand. The fire and eight. Pain taking the right off that horse's back and I think the fire is going to be backed out of here. No, it's not. It's a natural blitz. Natural blitz being backed out. That pain just taking the weight off to fire, and natural blitz is being backed out of gate number two. Horse is trying to sit down to the gates, and natural blitz has been released from the gate and is under the eye of a veterinary surgeon now. Zagalia settles with shower of roses in the one and three gates. Raika is ready in four. Langoline 5, Fields at OMR 6, the favourite one row 7 and the fire in 8. The gate 2 is vacant as they have a look at natural bits, so it's all clear. 
So he waits for natural blitz to come up to gate number two. No wheels around again. Under the eye of the veterinary surgeon at the moment, natural blitz. He's cleared to run. It's coming up. Off it goes, natural blitz on the two. Now they're ready. Set. Racing. Left in a perfect line, two on the fire, one of the first to break the line out wide. Araka in the centre and Shower of Roses, Clangalang fields of Omar and Lonro going back after the start. And Zagalia last of all as Faraka goes up on the outside. Well off the fence to lead Shower of Roses and fields of Omar up third in the fire fourth. Then Clangalang from Lonro's got two behind it, Zagalia and Natural Blitz, but it's Faraka out of the 1600 metre mark. The free going bear from South Africa and she moves three lengths in front from Shower of Roses, two or three further back. Fields of Omar third, four lengths to fire, running fourth, the half clangalang fifth, two to long row, one then Zagalia and two to natural blitz, and they're strung right out at the 1400 metre mark of the Cox Plate and the leader Paraka, two and a half lengths in front of Shower of Roses, three further back, Fields of Omar, four or five lengths, clangalang outside of fire, a length and a half to long row, he's back running sixth, then Zagalia and natural blitz is last of all, plenty of speed at the 1000 metre mark, Paraka down the back by two to Shower of Roses, four or five then Fields of Omar third. Five lengths to fire Clangalang. Two then to Lonro. He's a good 12 lengths off the lead from Zagalia and Natural Blitz as they come off the back of the 850. Paraka three quarters in front of Shower of Roses. Three then to Fields of Omar. Four or five Clangalang and to fire. Two to Lonro. A half then Zagalia. One Natural Blitz up the side. At the 700 and Shower of Roses went to the front from Paraka. Two to Fields of Omar. Two further back to fire Clangalang. Lonro is poised about four lengths off them. He's about to wind up at the 600 as they race to the 550, Shower of Roses a length in front, Fields of Omar going up to it now, a length into fire here's Lonro putting it a run out wider followed by Clangalang, Fields of Omar hit the front before the turn from to fire, followed further back by Lonro then Clangalang turning for home Fields of Omar ahead in front up to fire and Lonro joining in on the outside they straighten up, it's Fields of Omar a neck in front of the fire Lonro down the outside, Fields of Omar a neck in front, the fire trying to get in from Lonro, Fields of Omar and the fire feels the way the inside he's hanging on feels the way you've done it yes feels the way he's done it and they come the line to fire three quarters for this number wins the game clangling for the back shower of roses natural blitz and last of all is paraka can you believe it the bloke that called the race his horse won it what about that for a story neil cooney went up and spoke to him earlier 970 in a dollar 80. Sport 927's caller Brian Martin has called the winner. Let's go back and hear him. Fields of Omar has won the Cox Plate for 2003. Number three, Fields of Omar, Stephen King, defeating number two to fire. And one long one row is third, three, two, and one. He would be shaking. He would be. I must mention Tony McAvoy. That is a great win for Tony McAvoy to... Uh, the horse came over from Lindsay Park during the week. They'd taken him home after the tour act. They brought him back. It was a late decision. Brian Martin's left the, the box. We've been told he's dashing down. Uh, it, as you say, this has been a brilliant training performance. Stephen King was the one that sat closest, wasn't he? He was the one that sat closest to the leaders, Paraka and Shower of Roses. On the turn, well, he looked like... They were going to get him. The fire was uh, right there, and he's run second for the second consecutive time. And Darren had given Lonro every chance. Now, right here, Lonro looks the winner. But in about 20 or 30 metres' time, about now, Darren doesn't look so balanced. He starts to drift out. You've got some problems if you've taken the shorts. You certainly have, Bruce. Um, great ride by Stephen King. He's just parked behind the leaders all the way, and Fields of Omar found plenty under pressure in the straight. Lonro had his chance. He had he had a beautiful run uh, at the 600. He looked like he was going to take the race out, but struggling on the bend, Darren's had to go for the whip in the left hand, and he's he's wobbled up the straight. And just when the chips were down, he just didn't find enough. That was always the query with him, wasn't it? Uh, Dame uh, not being smart after the event here, but the, the high pressure races was what the big question about Lonro was, and I think he's. Uh, but that's found him out today. The three horses that were in the race last year, one, two, and three this year. John Letts is with Stephen oh. King. What a moment for King. Oh, what about this? And, uh, and, and Stephen, uh, you just keep winning all the big ones. And what about the Cox Plate? Is it a dream? It is, John. I mean, it's, it's just such a fantastic race to ride in. Um, high pressure. Uh, I was really happy with the way the, run, the race worked out for me. 
a winter plan and uh, it was a good, great, gutsy win. It's absolutely fantastic. Can't even go a little it. bit earlier, didn't you, than usual? But gee, yeah. didn't he find it like a cage lion in the straight? Well, the plan was to sort of hopefully uh, we can control the tempo coming into the straight and uh, not only such a bulldog hold him off, which we did. And uh, how many, how many rides you had on him? This is my second. This is your second. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm happy. And they're a pretty good move to have Bob and Blake to the cottage of the group of guys, isn't it? Well, well I'll do seven boys and Brian Martin. So you'll keep the ride for another race, won't you? Oh, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> you'd hope so. But anyway, I'll wait and see what happens. DB, he, he's been the bridesmaid behind a lot of horses, but gee, today he's really showed he's up with a lot of them, isn't he? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, the race was absolutely perfect. It worked out great. I mean, I was able to get a cushy run behind him and... And just save him, so if any of the, the big black horse came around me, I had an opportunity to sort of quicken. But, uh, it, was a, it was a good, gutsy, fantastic win. Fabulous, David, and well deserved. Congratulations, mate. Great race to win. Uh, I'm sorry about the winner, Cox Blades. Great race. Fabulous, mate. Thanks, Johnny. And down here, I can tell you it's pandemonium. Race calling is a difficult job at the best of times. Brian Martin, how difficult was that? Uh, it was the hardest ever, Pete. It was the hardest ever. I, I just want to come back and see this horse. He's, he's come back from nowhere. I cannot believe it, Pete. I cannot believe what's happening around here at the moment. It's wonderful, Lindsay Park, for Tony McAvoy. Uh, we've, we've battled with this horse. Uh, God bless him. The longest two minutes of your life? Longest two minutes ever, mate. It's just unbelievable. Here he comes. Go and give him a kiss. Brian Martin will catch up with Tony McAvoy very shortly. What an incredible for training performance by Tony. And what a great race call from Brian Martin. Bruce, I'm sure you'd agree, under the most difficult of circumstances. Absolutely brilliant, uh, Peter. Superb. Damien, you rode this horse in this race last year. And, um, amazing training effort by Tony McAvoy. He's, he sent this horse into the race on the fresh side, only his third run this preparation. And there's no doubt that little bit of rain, rain that's fallen before the race has helped him. And, uh, you know, just I'm so happy for all There's a host of owners in this horse, and they're all wonderful people. And, and congratulations to them. You must have been feeling strange up the straight. The horse you rode last year, holding off the horse you would have ridden this year. Yeah, and to fire a gallon in defeat. I mean, amazing run by him, because he wouldn't have been suited by the rain that fell and uh, a very game second. I think it's a minor thing but in the context of the day but Zagalia has run a slashing fourth. Her Melbourne Cup prospects have increased again after today. This was a mighty run behind the big three. Yeah, she, isn't, she has not put a bad run in this preparation and uh, she was the only horse who really made good ground from the table of the field. But what a great effort by Tony McAvoy. He's had his problems this horse. He's coming to the race third up as you say. I queried about to whether he's tough enough to win this. I'm sure the rain did help him but nevertheless he's been too tough. It's the Hayes line going on. Colin with Dulcify and so-called. Dulcify, one of the greatest wins ever. David Hayes, I think, in his first year of training with Better Loosen Up. Yep. And, and now and now Moran had won as well for CS in his last year, I think. And now Tony McAvoy with this very, very brave horse, Fields of Omar. I mean, they were going to go for the McKinnon. They weren't going to go for the Cox Plate until he ran in the two round. Went back to Adelaide, Lindsay Park, as I said, came over here in the middle of the week. He's got a big gap in his neck, hasn't he, this horse? Yeah, they call it the prophet's thumb. It's, um, they say good horses have them, and, um, you know, there's no rule to it. It's, I think it's the way they are formed in the room with their, with their hoof there, but his is massive. It's the size of your fist. Stephen King has now won Caulfield Cups, Melbourne Cups and Cox Plates, so he's won three of the four majors. That's his first ride in the Cox Plates since he rode out in 1997. He'd be wrapped with his king. Since he's come back from Hong Kong a few years ago, he's, he's probably struggled a little bit to stamp his authority in the big races, and I uh, just, it's his first Cox Plate. He'd be delighted. It's the greatest day in the short training career of Tony McAvoy. He's with Peter Dunnigan. Tony McAvoy, I spoke to you the other night about the dynasty of Lindsay Park and this race. Well, you've now completed it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an enormous thrill, Pete. I can't believe it. What were your thoughts during the race? Uh, we went forward. I must say, I thought they'd gone too hard. I thought we were probably a bit too close. Third up at a mile and a quarter going at that speed. But uh, Stephen King, you know, great jockey, knew what he had under him. And, Tremendous horse to show the, the courage that he showed in the straight, um, returning from an injury, great performance by the horse. They probably took 12 seconds to run the last 200 metres, did it seem like half an hour? Um, I don't know, I couldn't quite see the last bit, there was everyone jumping and yelling, and, uh, but uh, the vibe around me was pretty good, I thought we'd got close. You must have tremendous personal satisfaction to get this horse, even to get him to this race today, but to win it is a remarkable achievement by yourself. Well, there's a lot of people that have gone. We've got, uh, I've got Farriers to thank, uh, Ray Purdy and Greg Murray at home at Lindsay Park, Campbell Baker, uh, Gary Fennessy, John Cornell, Deb Rose, all the people that have just worked tirelessly. Um, 
on, on this horse to get him back. And then, uh, and then, you know, it's fantastic. And finally, I think CS and Peter Hayes have got a bit of grandstand seat. They're probably laughing at us getting wet at the moment, but they'd be pretty happy with what's going on. They'd be thrilled. Well done, Tony. What a story. He's full of emotion. Just one irony. We all talked about Octagonal being the sire of Lonro to win it. Once before in the Fox Plate history has a horse won the race inside the winner. That was heroic with Ajax. It's a long time ago. Rubiton is the sire of Fields of Omar. So Rubiton has done it today with Fields of Omar. Your final thoughts, Damien, on the race and where in Lonro, I guess, now? It was a classic race, Bruce. Three probably the best horses in the race battling it out down the straight. Um, I think Lonro probably didn't perform at his best today. Maybe he just not as good a horse at Mooney Valley, but uh, he just struggled when, when the chips were down, as I said earlier. But uh, a great race and a very fitting winner and um, the fire was, was gallon in defeat too. One thing about Lonro, he ran his heart out today. He certainly left nothing behind. He left a bit of himself here at Mooney Valley and so did the fire and in particular this horse who joins the long list of greats who have won the Cox Plate.